In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to wire a NEMA L5-30 receptacle. This is a 30 amp receptacle and it has a twist lock feature. You would see this typically in a, maybe an industrial setting or you might have an RV hookup or even a portable generator hookup inside your home. Server racks might have this. So this wiring is going to be very similar to any 30 amp 120 volt receptacle. The only difference is this one is kind of a twist lock feature. You're going to want your safety glasses, of course, as always for this project. And then also you'll see I have pre-run the wires. So this video will not be showing you how to run the wires itself, but I have run 10 gauge Romex and let's get to the video. Let's go over supplies you might need for this project. You're obviously going to need that NEMA L5-30. You're going to probably want some sort of lineman and pliers. Um, you're also going to want some sort of needle nose, or in this case, I use this wire stripper that has kind of like this combination end. I really love this. As always, to any of this stuff, I leave links in my description. You're going to want some decent quality 3M electrical tape, screwdrivers, a knife, Definitely want to have a tester of some sort, multimeter. These are just my diagonal cutters. You're going to want a 30 amp breaker because we're putting a 30 amp receptacle on. A non-contact voltage tester. Wire nuts. Now you're going to have to be able to hold a minimum of four, number 10. So get the bigger gray ones. They'll even say on the package what how many wires they're rated for. I'll also leave it a link in the description for some 10 gauge rated Wagos. They just make life so much easier, but I didn't get them for this video. This is just showing you that you can get Wagos for that size. You're gonna want some sort of wire twister. So this is more of a luxury item, trying it out for this video, but you just put this inside your impact and it twists the wires up very easily. Before going ahead, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have power shut off to the circuit. So go over to your panel box, turn your breaker into the off position, and then we're gonna go ahead and double check. Now attached to this video, I'll actually link my safety video, but it's pretty basic. You're just going to have to make sure you have your non-contact voltage tester, ensure it's on, rub it on some clothing. You hear that beep, we know it works. Touch each of the conductors. It didn't beep. Now we have to make sure this tool still works. So rub it on some clothing again. You hear the beep, you know it works. So. We know that it should be dead, but I always like to double check by going through with my tester, or you can use a multimeter, turn it into your voltage AC, that's V with the squiggly line. In my case, my tester is good for both DC and AC voltage. Take out your leads and touch all the wires. So I'm just touching the exposed copper. We're getting zero volts, we know it's safe, now we can work on it. As with any receptacle, we're always going to do white to our silver, black to our brass, and green bare copper to our green ground screw. Now I like to do what I call the jumper method. So go ahead, cut yourself about a six inch long piece of Romex or a six inch long piece of spare wire that you have. Make sure it's the correct gauge. So in this case, because we have a 30 amp receptacle and we have a 30 amp circuit breaker and we have number 10, I'm gonna be using number 10. So you should be able to just pull those conductors out. It's a little tricky at first, but it comes out. You can see you got your three conductors in there. So go ahead and I typically like to start with my ground. And in this case, instead of using the Wagos like we have in previous videos, we're gonna be using these gray wire nuts. And I'm actually going to be using this wire twisting tool because you can use your linesman's pliers. Just take it, you know, you put your wires together and you pre-twist everything. But we're gonna be attempting to use this tool. Never actually used it before, but this is a good trial run. So you just take it, put it right into your impact. 
then you're gonna bend your wires, get everything the same length as each other. You know, you don't want them starting at a different twisting position. So just manipulate your wires, get them all butted up the same length. Stick everything together. Now, be careful, don't be trigger heavy. There we go. You can see everything's twisted together. Now all we have to do is trim the ends off. And put a nice wire knot on it. You can see everything's twisted together. You want to have a nice solid twist on that so that even in case your wire nut becomes loose over time, it's held firmly together. It's never coming undone. So just take your wire nut, tighten it down until you can't anymore. Perfect. And we'll end up using this jumper. It'll go right into the receptacle. Now, I'm going to go on to my neutral. Again, we're just using a six inch, roughly long piece. I'm gonna to go to the number 10, strip out three quarters of an inch to an inch. Do the same thing on our other whites, which is our neutral. Take our tool, butt up everything nice and neat to each other. Nice. Okay. You can see that tool doesn't do a perfect job every time but it helps pre-choice everything together. There we go. So I always just use my linesman pliers. I'm gonna trim it up so everything's the same length. And then we're just using our gray wire knot. Just it on there. That's not going anywhere. You can also see you don't want any exposed conductor hanging out. So you can go ahead and you can possibly strip too much of your wire, but you don't want to have any exposed conductor hanging out. The only time you're going to see any copper is obviously on your ground. So our neutral's done. Now let's do, last but not least, our hot. Again, I'm just stripping it with the 10 gauge hole on my wire strippers. Take off your spare six inch piece. Strip that guy too. Strip this guy a little bit more. That way we don't have a bad connection. Butt up everything. Okay. You can see we twisted nice and good. Just taking my linesman's pliers, cleaning that up. I'm gonna cut the end off so we have a nice clean, even tip. And then, of course, you put on your wire nut. I 
it's not going anywhere. Okay, now this is where we're going to strip our jumpers we made. So if you look on your device, most of them will actually have a strip gauge to them. Basically, you want to make sure that you don't have your conductor hanging past past the, the bottom of the receptacle, right? You don't want exposed conductor hanging out. So you only have to strip about three quarters of an inch. Strip a little bit more on my neutral. There we go. Now, you can see they do have screws, but we don't have to actually make hooks in them because they have these nice little plates that move in and out and they'll actually crush and crimp on the wire. So green, as always, we're gonna go to our ground. The reason I'm shaking it so much is I'm just trying to get those, those little loose plates to come, come out all the way so I can stick my wire behind it. So there's our green ground. Going to our bare copper. And also, in case you were wondering, this is a ground bonding jumper, which just bonds to the box, make sure that we have a solid ground connection. And you just tighten that down until it stops. Make a nice, firm connection. You don't want any loose wires. Next, I like to do my neutral. Again, you just are gonna end up sneaking that wire behind that little plate. Might loosen this a little bit. There we go. Now you just tighten the plate on. Okay, it's not going anywhere. And last but not least, of course, you're gonna do your hot. You'll just sneak it there behind that plate. There we go. Sometimes it's a little tricky, but there we go. It's going in. And then just tighten her down. There we go, she's tight. Now, importantly, you have to wrap it with electrical tape. You don't want you know, fingers somehow sliding behind, wires, whatever. You don't want anything possibly slipping behind and touching these screws. So use your Super 88. Again, links in the description. Don't cheap out. Get some high quality electrical tape. There we go. That's not going anywhere. Now, these are solid wires, so they're a little stiff. Don't be afraid. Put some pressure behind manipulating them back into the box. Deeper boxes work better. They give you more room, but 10 gauge obviously is stiff, so take some force. Shove everything back in the box. Just about lined up. So now all you gotta do is we gotta put on our faceplate. Here's our faceplate. As you can see, they'll just line up here with the screws right there are the threaded holes in your receptacle. So I'll go ahead and I'll first screw that in. Okay, now you just have to push everything back into the box. It will take a little bit of effort because, again, that 10 gauge wire is quite stiff. 
but don't worry. You're not going to hurt anything. Okay, at this point, everything is tightened down. You can go ahead and you can actually turn your circuit breaker back on. So just go from the off position, turn it to the on position, and then we'll come back and test. Now that we have our circuit breaker turned back on, go ahead and take out your tester or multimeter. You're gonna to wanna to take out the leads, turn it onto your voltage, AC, V with the squiggly line. And let's make sure that we have 120 volts. Now this is a tricky part, just give me everything touching in these twist lock receptacles. But we will be able to get the voltage. Just have to touch it right. <laughs> there we go. 120 volts AC. see if I can show that on camera. 120 volts. We wired it correctly. We know that it's safe. Now I actually have down here we have another receptacle. I could test that. Still have 120 volts. So we know that we've wired it correctly at this point. At this point the project's done. Thanks for sticking around and watching this video. I, as always I appreciate likes, comments, and subscribe. I have other videos, if you like this type of content, I have how to wire a single pole switch. I have how to wire receptacles. I have a whole electrical series that is coming out. Make sure, as always, you work safely on electrical equipment. And thank you so much for watching.